Greetings from the European Parliament studio in Strasbourg. My name is Ilza Nagla and today we will be talking about racism. And today I'm joined by Mr. Romeo Franz. He's an MEP from Germany, uh, from the political group of the Greens here. Yes, that's right. Very nice to have you here. And as far as I know, you are the first German Sinto to sit in the European Parliament. Sinto are related to Romani. Can you explain just briefly for our viewers what is the difference and what do you have in uh -huh. common? Yes, we have uh, 6.4 uh, million citizens who has a uh, Romani background and uh, or we are the biggest ethnic uh, minority in the EU in Europe. Uh, we are very diverse because we have more uh, uh, as Sinti and Roma we have in Spain 850,000 Calais, we have 150,000 Calais in Portugal, we have the in, in, in France, we have the Manouche, we have in Spain the Rissande, we have the, the Calderacha, Lovara, Daraju, Boyage, and that, you see it's, it's very, very diverse, our culture and our language. We have a language that calls Romani, the Romanese, and Romanes has 200 dialects, and it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's very, very, very di different dialects different, as different well. Different dialects, yes. and so we are very different and very diverse uh, uh, minority in Europe. But then I have to ask, uh, have you encountered personally racism? What is, what is the situation with your community? No. Let me speak about my experience. It's, uh, <laughs> I think it's, I'm, I, I'm born as a, as a Sinto. I lost six members in the Holocaust, aunts and uncles. And um, anti-gypsism and discrimination, I grew up with this. And um, it don't stop. Today, I'm a, I'm a member of the European Parliament, but uh, very many times I'm on maybe on camping sites when I make holidays with my family. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a victim of a door police. Then they see oh, you are a little bit darker in your face. Oh, you can be a gypsy. Oh, and they would not allow you in? Uh, yes, and oh. uh, not only at campsites. We have in Germany and in Austria very, very many cases in the summer. There are Romani people. Uh, has no chance to come to a campsite to make holidays or in restaurants too. Uh, that someone for a few uh, months, I was going with my, with my, uh, with my wife uh, to a restaurant and they saw me and said, we have not a place for you and it was clear that was because of our ethnicity. And that's, we speak about Germany. That's uh, in Germany, more than 60% uh, of the majority are against Romani people. And, but when you go there in the east of Europe or Italy, maybe, you have 80, 90% yeah, who are against. Worse. You know, it's, it's much more worse. But 60% is enough for me too in Germany. But too here much. in the European Parliament, it's supposed to be a place where different ethnicities, different religions meet. Mm -hmm. Have you encountered racism here in the European Parliament? Oh, yes. You know, we have here in the parliaments, many colleagues are from the far right. And they are using this moment when we discuss or we have a debate about uh, this topic. Then they use this moment to make... Uh, yeah, hate speeches against us. One of his colleagues is Angel Dambaski from the uh, uh, from from uh, from Bulgaria, and he he is many times he used this moment to 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 make a hate speech against Romani people, and uh, that's that's a reality. We have here in the Parliament a part of the members are far right, and they are. Yeah, they make so racist we, speeches. We have racists here in the European Parliament. Yeah. Uh, I've read in one article, in one interview, to actually name them by, by name. Yeah. It's not uh, only the, the, the MEP from Bulgaria, there's yeah. also from Romania, mm -hmm. the former president of Romania, yeah. also from Slovakia. But all of them seem to come from Eastern Europe. How come? What's Why in Eastern Europe there's more uh, uh, racism and more sort mm -hmm. of negative attitudes towards uh, your community? You know, the history of anti-gypsism is a really 
old history, more than 700 years. And um, the situation of the Romani people, maybe the pol population there in the east of uh, Europe, is a very huge population. Not in Germany, we have maybe 300,000, but in, in Romania, you have 10, maybe 20 percent of the population are Romani people there. And you know, that's a very huge population. Or who knows about the situation in Romania that the Romani people was 500 years slaves. So slavery was, in the most cases, not mentioned. And that's a kind of, yeah, of, of the European culture codex, anti-Gypsism. And you see in these countries in the east of Europe, very huge uh, uh, population of Romani people is uh, that uh, there is uh, the anti-Gypsism, it's very high. You have actually campaigned uh, to include anti-Gypsism, Gypsism as a recognized form of racism. Mm. Why would you need that? Because it isn't enough that it's covered by the general anti-racism rules and norms? Yes, this is uh, the problem. When we, when we take the anti-Semitism, uh, anti that's not only recognized, it's uh, anti-Semitism it will be punished. And it's, it's not, uh, it's, it's not uh, uh, I see, like anti-Gypsism, you know, recommendations are not enough to punish. And, uh, that's my work to have really a law to that 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 uh, national state, uh, states must be obliged to fight against racism and to recognize anti-Gypsism or not only with a recommendation, we saw it in the past, that recommendations are very useless and uh, not successful. And that will be very important that uh, anti-Gypsism must be punished and we see it and I'm very proud of this that Romania, Romania implement this year, at the beginning of the year, the first law against anti-Gypsism ever in the world. And that was for me a very... Yeah, especially taking into account yeah. that their former president, so you, yeah, you named yeah, yeah. him as a, as a racist here. But yeah. you can see in this country, like R Romania, where is a high, um, high number of anti-Gypsism, they implement really a law against anti-Gypsism. And that I think that is a best practice uh, examples, what we need for whole Europe, and that shows that is not only a dream to have a law, no, it is possible. And Romania shows this with these laws against anti-Gypsism. And I think here we must learn, as EU and the Commission must learn, that we do it in the whole world for all the national states that must be, uh, must be obliged to do the same. So, but you would like to raise anti-Gypsism to the same level as anti-Semitism, that they both are treated yeah. and respected equally, and that sort of the, also the sort of appreciation in society is yeah. is equal, right, for the both. Uh... That's right. It's uh, you see the the recognition in the value uh, say from from anti-Semitism. It's not enough. It's it is bad, but the anti-Gypsism. It's under, under this line. It's not at the same niveau. And we need this niveau to begin to work and to raise awareness. Look, we have this uh, case of uh, Stanislav Tomasz. I will speak today about this case. He was killed from policemen. The same situation like uh, by uh, George Floyd. The same, similar, the same case. But we have no awareness for this, uh, for this is for this kind of uh, police violence against Romani people, and that must be changed, and that we can change only. I think a law can be really uh, useful to to have here uh, a just a, a justification for for uh, these uh, victims. You mentioned this uh, this case uh, of police violence against Romani. Uh, uh, people. Uh, 
can you explain it? What exactly happened, and why are you comparing it to George Floyd? Because it was the same situation. Two policemen uh, uh, pushed this, uh, pushed Stanislav uh, Tomas uh, the to the ground. To the ground, and one put the knee six minutes in his neck. Six minutes, and we have seen the the videos, and it was six more than six minutes, and after then Stanislav was dead. It was similar when you show this video with George Floyd and you see the video with, uh, with, with Stanislav Thomas, it was and it happened really, where? It's the same. Yeah. And it happened where? Yeah. In Germany? No, in, in Czechia, in, in Teplice. In Czech Republic, yep. Teplice. So, and after this, the policeman, uh, the, the minister, the premier minister, and uh, came to the policeman and says, it was a good murder. And you know, that's not possible normally in Europe where have, and we have European values. And these were European values, when you see then, then uh, this behavior, I think you cannot believe on this uh, European values and that we must do against something. But do you have a feeling that situation is getting worse during the COVID pandemic? Because mm. we, we have talked with other MEPs as well about the hate speech and hate crime. And they are saying that during pandemic it has increased, especially towards women and journalists. How is it in, in your community? Do you have, see any changes? We have. Uh, many cases in East Europe, in Bulgaria and in uh, Romania and Slovakia, that the uh, that our people, the Romani people, uh, scapegoated for for the spread of the virus. So, and um, that's a situation who who remembers me at the time of the National Socialism, where, we look, where they uh, are looking for a scapegoat, and there was the Jews and the Sinti and Roma for, uh, as, as a scapegoat. And there was the same, same situation now in COVID-19. And I have seen there a video was sent that uh, 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 families, Romani families, was bitten from the police because they want to leave uh, their, their houses to, to get something to eat and to drink and so, and it was not possible for them, and they was beaten from the police, really brutally beaten from the police, and there was many, many cases. And that you see, this kind of anti-Gypsyism was not reflected in the past, so, and now that's a result, that this is, uh, the anti-Gypsyism is growing up. But do you have some sort of, do you see a correlation, a link that uh, the vaccination rates in, in uh, uh, Romani communities is not that high? Uh, and that there is a, some sort of, a, I don't know, backlash towards that as well? It's a kind of the access. You know, many people, 80% of the Romani people in the EU are living in precarious situations. Uh, that means they are in segregated settlements. So they are very poor. And um, they have not no access to the health system, to the labor market, to education, and so. And the same as with the, with the vaccination. First, the majority, then this minority. That's all the, the policy, you know. And then the next point is, uh, many of them uh, has, especially uh, women, have a have the experience that, uh, or they are scared about that they will be sterilized, you know? And that's something, this fear came together with the segregated, uh, uh, you know, with, with the segregated uh, uh, living situation there, and that came uh, together, and then we have this situation that they are not uh, uh, vaccinated. Of course, for the most of them, for the majority, they are, I think, not really important or so, but only when it comes to this case, to make them a scapegoat. And then uh, the thing is, uh, then they are in the focus. Oh, yes. uh. Thank you so much for this discussion. And we today talked about racism and anti-gypsism sentiments. And Mr. Franz is campaigning to, uh, to make sure that anti-gypsism is recognized in the same way, on the same level as anti-Semitism. Thank you and goodbye.